What's up everybody, it's Matt from Peter Glenn and in this video we're gonna to talk to you about wide snowboards and do you really need a wide snowboard or not? All right, so the biggest question we get every single year is do I need a wide snowboard with this size boot? And a lot of times people are asking about a boot that does not need a wide snowboard. And things have really changed a lot over the years. Back in the early 90s, like 92, 93, when wide snowboards first came out and K2 introduced the Fat Bob, snowboard boots were very, very big. The technology had not gotten to where it is today. A great way to actually demonstrate that is that we actually have a size 12 boot here, and then this is a size 11 boot. If we put these side by side and we kind of look at the footprint of the boot, and that's basically exactly what it sounds like when you step into the snow it's how much footprint how big the sole is there obviously is a big big difference in that footprint between an 11 and a 12. now if we actually go back to those early 90s boot technology this is actually about how big a size 10 and a half would be. It was huge. The materials on the boots, the constructions of the boots, the technology again hadn't gotten there yet and the boots were really, really big. Now through the years, obviously we've come up with better materials, we've come up with better shaping, we've come up with basically a boot that has stayed the exact same size on the inside, but they've been able to shrink the outside of the boot. And that's where now this size 11 boot is much, much smaller. Even this size 12 boot is much, much smaller. This size 12 boot back in the 90s would probably have been that long on the outside, but it would have been the same size on the inside. Now, that being said, a lot of the wide snowboards and where you needed a wide snowboard, that information really didn't change. There's a lot of outdated information on the internet. And going right along with that too, a lot of the bindings have actually changed too. Too. And they actually, the only thing that's really changed is just the information and how adjustable they've become. So for instance, a Burton in a size medium in the past used to be an eight to 10. But since the boots started shrinking in the like mid 2000s and they really started knocking down the sizing of them, the binding size actually went up to an eight to 11 because you were able to get that bigger boot into that smaller binding. And a lot of that technology basically has really opened up a lot of boards and a lot more selection for boards and binding for those people with bigger feet. So in this one, we are gonna focus on the size 12 boot. Once you mount your binding and you get it centered up so your boot, toe edge, and the heel edge are hanging off the exact same amount, that makes a huge, huge difference no matter what boot you have. And we'll leave a link in the description below to a video about how to do that because that is a very, very important thing when you're actually getting your binding mounted on your board, no matter what size boot. So back to the size 12, there are a few variables that kind of go along with this as well. The actual width of the board, the conditions that you're riding in, how hard or how soft the snow is, the actual skill level of the rider, how hard you're carving on the snow on your toe side and your heel side edge, and even the bevel of the sole or the height of the footbed can all be factors when it comes into whether you need a wide board. But in general, most boots, most bindings, most boards nowadays, that size 12 can fit on a normal width board with very, very minimal complications when it comes to your average rider and even some of your above average riders on just your average day of snowboarding. So the reason that you might not want a wide board is it's all about the performance of the board edge to edge and the performance of the board when you're actually carving on your edge too. So edge to edge, a wide board is slower from edge to edge. It's just a fact. If your board is this wide and you have to go from here to here, that's gonna take longer than if your board is this wide and you have to go from here to here. Narrower boards are quicker from edge to edge. Now, the other thing too is that with your toes hanging off the edge of your board, a lot of people think, oh, if my toes are hanging off the board and I go to carve, my foot's gonna dig into the snow. It takes a lot more than you think to actually get your toes and heels into the snow. Once your boot is lifted up off of the board, the angle of your binding, also that bevel on the toe and heel, like we say, you actually have to get the board up pretty high before it's gonna hit. And you need to have your toes and heels hanging off the side of your board to get good pressure on your edges. Not to say if your toes and heels aren't hanging off the edges that you can't get pressure on your toe and heel edges, but you have to lean a lot more, you have to work a lot harder. I always kind of liken it to if you're standing on your board, let's say with just your shoes, and let's say you have to stand on your board and you need to lift the board up on edge, but you can't take your foot off the board. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna take your foot and you're gonna leave it completely on the board? Or are you gonna hang your toes, your heels off a little bit and then grab the edge of the board and lift it up? 
you're gonna do that because that's gonna get that pressure on that edge. You can't push straight down on that edge if you're not over that edge. And that starts with your feet and it goes to your upper body. I always say that wide boards, if you've got a smaller foot and if you don't need a wide board, it can be like trying to turn a coffee table. It just gets very, very sluggish. Now, if your foot is big enough to hang off the edges, then you actually don't notice it as much because you've got that advantage, you've got that bigger foot, and you've got that leverage where you need it. So again, we're gonna focus on that size 12 because I really say that with a modern day boot and board and bindings and everything, size 12 is really that tipping point where you don't need a wide board. Yes, there are certain conditions where it can be beneficial, and sometimes you just might like it. You know, just like with everything in snowboarding, there's a lot of personal preferences. I know some people that do have smaller feet in that nine to 10 range, and they just like the wide boards, but they also understand that they're gonna have to work harder to basically get that board from edge to edge and to gain those advantages, but they're also skilled enough. But again, for your average rider, you'd be really, really surprised as to how far up on edge you can get a size 12 boot on a normal width board. So most of your wide boards are gonna be boards in the upper 25 centimeters. We're talking like 25.789 and getting into those 26 centimeter and wider boards. Those are gonna be considered your wide boards. Now why those numbers are good to know is because when boards get longer, they do get wider. If you take a regular width snowboard and let's say it's a 148 and that has a waist width of 25. If you take that exact same board in a regular width and you actually bump it up to 161, that board's not just gonna get longer, it's gonna get wider. So some people think, oh, I gotta have a wide board, and they might look at the wide version of that board, but then if they fit in the 61, and then they look at just the standard width on that regular width version, they might find that it actually is just as wide as some other companies wide boards. And then also when you are looking at those numbers too, realize that, that measurement is in centimeters. And a lot of times you're gonna see 25.1, 25.5, or maybe it'll just say 252. And that's basically millimeters. So you can just throw in the decimal point and drop it down to centimeters. But again, when we're measuring that thing in centimeters, you gotta remember that that's centimeters. Centimeters are very, very small. And then when you're talking about 0.5 centimeters, you're really not talking much at all. And then when we do make a board wider, let's go from a 25 to a 26, that's one centimeter. But now we're actually talking about adding a half of a centimeter to either side of the board. It's not getting one centimeter wider here and here, it's only getting a half a centimeter wider on each side. So those numbers are great, great numbers to look at and great, great numbers to pay attention to, but also don't be a slave to the numbers. When you're looking at two boards, you're like, oh my God, what should I get? And if you're looking at it and going, it's 0.5 centimeters, you're not gonna notice a huge, huge difference. So again, I can talk blue in the face about this stuff, but the cool thing is, is I've actually got a board here with a binding centered up with a size 12 boot. And this is a normal width board. This is a Burton name dropper. And this thing actually has a waist width of 25.1. One. So this is actually a little bit narrower on the narrower side when it comes to the, the midsection. And this is a 155. So this is actually not unheard of for somebody with a size 12 boot or even maybe a 13 to actually want to be on this board. There are some people that are a little bit shorter with a little bit bigger feet, or maybe you're just taller and this is a park board and you're just gonna have this as your only board for riding park and you have another board for riding all mountain that is bigger and longer. So we've got this thing centered up. We've got the toe and the heel hanging off the exact same amount. Now I'm gonna actually turn this thing sideways so you can actually see this a little bit easier. Also, if I tip this thing up here, we're gonna have the side cut to deal with. This way, the side cut is actually gonna be sitting in the middle of this table so you can actually see how close this thing gets to the snow. So right off the bat, boom, we got a size 12 boot. We've got about an inch overhang on the back here. Now when I tip this thing up on edge, we're going, going, going. Boom, that's where the heel hits. So right off of the bat, that's a huge carve especially on your heel side edge. It's super, super easy to take and drop your toes into the snow and get all of your weight onto your toe side edge, but it's not as easy to do that on your heels. So carving a super hard carve on your heel side edge is not an easy thing, 
especially for park riders, especially for beginner, even intermediate riders, even some of your advanced riders are not even carving that hard on their heel side edge. So again, when we tip this thing up and we get it down, and obviously here I'm gonna have to flex it a little bit, but that's, look at how much of the base you can see. This is actually, that's actually straight up and down. So we're actually not that far from straight up and down on your heel side edge. And again, that's a size 12 boot on a 25.1 centimeter waist width. Now we're gonna turn this thing sideways and we're gonna go towards the toe edge. Gonna move some of this stuff in the background here. So we're gonna tip this thing up. Now there's where the toes are hitting. So again, crazy, crazy angle. Let me turn this thing a little bit so you can actually see the angle of this car. This is an insane car, especially on this board, which is a park board. Now, if you do get into some more all mountain style boards, where you are gonna be riding a little bit faster and some of those free ride boards, they're probably gonna be just a tad bit wider. You're also probably gonna be riding a board that's a little bit longer too. This does again, have a little bit narrower waist width on it, just because that's this specific board. But that's where I say, pay attention to those numbers. Are you skilled enough? Be realistic about it. Are you skilled enough to actually carve that hard? There's a good chance that you're not, and I'm not taking a dig at you. Me, I rarely even carve that hard, not to say that I'm an advanced rider, but I have been riding for a long time and I can lay down a carve on a snowboard. Now, obviously you can see those things and we start to get into some of those variables. If you're actually carving, now when you're sliding turns, that's completely different than if you're actually carving. This really only comes into play if you're actually digging into the snow and carving super, super hard. And another thing that people always say too is it's like, oh, it's snow, you're sitting down in the snow. Yeah, that is true. But the softer the snow gets, the less you're actually carving. Yeah, you might be looking at an angle that's this heavy, but even there, let's say you're sitting down in the snow and your toe's gonna catch there, that's still an incredibly hard carve on regular, regular snow for your average, and again, some of those even above average riders. Most people aren't carving that hard every single day. Another thing that I get a lot of too is people's like, well, what about the angle of the slope? Like if you're on the slope and you tip it up, your toes are gonna hit you know, a little bit quicker. It's like, well, yeah, that is true, but how many people are riding a slope that is crazy, crazy steep, enough that it's gonna make a huge, huge difference. Also, the only time that's gonna make a super big difference is if you're carving straight across the slope. Most people are just going down and your angle on your slope is going to be here. It's not going to be here. So the less angle that you're actually taking when you're riding down the hill, the less of a factor that is. Also, if you are riding a slope that is crazy, crazy steep, you have enough skill to carve crazy, crazy hard. You also have enough skill to be riding a wide board. And this video actually doesn't even apply to you. And then again, that goes right back to the skill level of the rider. If you are skilled enough to be able to put a board on edge that is wider, then again, you don't really need to be watching this video. Even if you watch some of the videos of those guys that are laying down those super, super hard carves, it's amazing what they can do. Watch the videos and see how much time that they're actually spending that far up on their edge that's beyond this. And when they are carving and they're doing those super hard carving videos, they are riding in conditions where you can really, really dig into the snow. So obviously with that 12, I always say you can go either way. A 12 is big enough that if you get on a wide board, you can push it from edge to edge. If you have a size 13 or up, definitely get a wide board. Don't even think about it. But the other thing to look at too is if you see a board and you're like, oh, I really, really like this board. It seems to be my riding style. Look at those numbers. Look at the size of the board that you should be on and look at the waist width. You might be actually within that tw upper 25 to 26 range and it might not be the wide specific board, but it might actually be the same width as most of your average wide boards. Also, when you're looking at a lot of the volume shift boards too, they make them shorter, they make them wider, and they make them stiffer so a bigger rider can ride a smaller board. But again, those boards are actually meant for those riders and they're gonna understand that that board is a little bit wider. And again, a lot of times when you look at those waist widths, they might be the equivalent to a specific wide board, but the company might not just label it as a wide because that actually is the standard width for that specific board. So as you can see, you might not need a wide board and a lot of that information out on the internet is very, very outdated. You can actually see it right here. We tip this thing up. That's crazy, crazy hard carving for a size 12 boot on a board that's only 25.1 centimeters wide. So it really does depend on the board. And again, it's all about that personal preference. But if you're just looking for a good board, 
park, all mountain, even into some of your free ride stuff, and you're just a good average to above average rider, again, you'd be really, really surprised that you don't need that wide board. You can actually get a better edge and also have a quicker reaction from edge to edge as well. But if you got any questions beyond what we talked about in the video, definitely leave some comments down below. We're on there every single day trying to answer your questions. We wanna make sure we can get you into some rad gear, but most importantly, we wanna make sure that it's gonna work for you, work for your riding style, and for the size of foot you've got too. Also make sure to like, subscribe, definitely get that bell on too so you can find out when all the new videos drop. Grab yourself a new board, whether it's a wide or not, and get out and ride. Because any day of riding is a good day of riding.